Hello and welcome to the Class Video Spotlight Series. I'm Robbie Bolo. Joining me today is Schaefer Jackson, a research director here at Class, specifically over telehealth. And we're meeting today to talk about this first look report that came out on VitalNet. Telehealth in particular, though, I mean, you talk about an energy space and healthcare due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Is there anything that's exploding like telehealth is? Oh, there's nothing exploding like telehealth uh, over the last 12 to 18 months. Um, we released a, a telehealth ecosystem report in the last few months to kind of give providers an idea of how many of the vendors that are out there and solutions that they might consider as far as telehealth goes. And obviously this wasn't an exhaustive list because there are too many vendors out there to, to include them all, but we wanted to give providers a, a, an idea of what's out there because there is so much out there. I'd imagine every day you're hearing one or two new players in the market that's saying, hey, we're, we're doing telehealth. What does it take to be considered? I mean, for class to measure a solution in telehealth, what does that entail? What does that mean they need to do? Yeah, so, so we do hear about new uh, solutions daily. Um, and sometimes there are vendors in existing segments, patient engagement, that are launching uh, uh, video capability inside their solution. Um, but, but right now we have the two segments. We kind of break out um, virtual care platforms and video conferencing is kind of the two different segments that we have. Um, and then in, inside the virtual care platforms, we kind of have the EMR players and the, the, the non-EMR players that are offering kind of video capabilities along with um, you know, virtual communication with some of their patients. So VitalNet, this is that first look report that we're talking about. Where do they fit in this ecosystem of telehealth? What do they do that's different than the other vendors that are measured in telehealth? Yeah, great question. So VitalNet came up and we looked at VitalNet because of some of the, the broad capabilities that they have inside the virtual care uh, kind of ecosystem. And one of the things that's coming up that's important to providers is being able to connect to other solutions in kind of that ecosystem. And so VitalNet offers some, some capabilities and functionalities to plug in potentially RPM solutions or interpretive services or some of the other um, imaging, some of the other solutions that come up as we talk to providers. Um, and then the other thing that, that VitalNet uh, is able to do that came up in our conversations again is um, provide a, a configurable workflow for each service line inside of a healthcare organization. So you might have a different workflow depending on the service line and VitalNet can meet your needs and, and we were able to talk to customers that used kind of the configure, um, configurability of the VitalNet solution. When you and I are on the phone with providers, we constantly hear about integration, specifically with the EMR. They want solutions that can integrate. Does VitalNet integrate with EMRs? Yes, VitalNet, uh, the integration is, is one of the things that we were able to, to validate as we went out and had conversations with their customers. Not every site had integration uh, deployed at their site, um, but we were able to validate integration um, with different EMRs uh, with VitalNet. So is this EMR agnostic or are there certain EMRs that they're more likely to integrate with? Or? Yeah, they're, they're EMR agnostic. Um, obviously we hear some of the same names that, that we hear a lot here as we talk to providers, the, the um, EMR vendors, both acute and some of the, the non-acute uh, EMR vendors. But at this point, they're able to work with a broad um, number of, of EMR vendors. One of the other things you mentioned, Schaefer, was configuration, configurable workflows. We have this personalization versus customization battle that we talk about at class all the time where customization can be really good for a small number of clients, but it's really not scalable. When you say configuration, are we talking more customization, personalization, where are we falling on, on that spectrum? Yeah, that's a great question. So when we talked to VitalNet initially, they made a point to say this is a configurable workflow and not call it customization as to avoid the the appearance of taking a long time that comes with customization. Um, but I think one of the questions that, that providers are gonna have as, as VitalNet moves forward is, how do we scale this, cust you know, this configurable workflow as they have more and more customers and bring on you know, a larger customer base? Can they provide that kind of you know, white glove service and that personal touch with each customer, with each service line? Is that something that's going to be able to, so what's the answer to that question then? Is this something that is scalable? Yeah, I, th I think with, with some of the, the, um, the teams that, that VitalNet has in place and we've been able to talk to some of their customers that have deployed their solutions with various, um, in various service lines with um, taking advantage of, of different areas that are important to them. Um, and so, I mean, obviously some of this remains to be seen. We'll have conversations and hopefully, hopefully we can validate 
experiences with VitalNet customers moving forward. But what we've seen so far, they've been able to provide um, that service to their customers. They, they, all the customers we, we spoke with said they would purchase the solution again. And all of them said they were highly satisfied with the VitalNet solution at this point. Any other outcomes that they were talking about? We've mentioned the interoperability, the customized workflows. Was there anything else that stood out from their customers? One of the, one of the things that came up was bringing together multidisciplinary teams to, to work in patient situations. And that's where you, know, you might be able to collaborate with a different team. Maybe they're at a different site. Maybe it's a specialist and you want to bring in that voice. And uh, so one of the validations that we, we saw as we had customer conversations is that ability to kind of collaborate and bring teams together to, to help patients and improve care. So what would you recommend providers consider as they're making this really important decision with regards to telehealth? We're, as we emerge out of this pandemic, I mean, the class research has shown that we're not gonna go back to pre-pandemic levels of telehealth usage. Yeah. This is here to stay. It's a much bigger decision with a lot more stakeholders now than what there were before. Physicians are bought on, they're saying, if I'm gonna use this, I care what we're going to use. Um, so what's your recommendation to providers as they make this, this crucial decision? So yeah, it's a great question. And one of the things that we validated in our telehealth performance report from last year is that, that providers will continue to look at their EMR vendor and the solution there. So that's something that, you know, as, you're, as a provider, you're gonna to continue to look at what your EMR vendor has to offer as far as virtual care solutions. Um, but I would look at, at you know, physician experience. One of the things that we're looking at for, our, for this year's telehealth performance report is, what is the physician experience? What is the patient experience? And what are some of the, what's the experience for some of the other staff that might touch a solution? And if you're able to, to have those positive experiences in each of those areas, then a solution like VitalNet might be for you. And we've been able to validate positive experiences in some of those areas. You mentioned a market like patient engagement earlier, another place that has tons of high energy. So tangentially to, to telehealth, things that are touching this ecosystem, there might be vendors that have telehealth solutions, but they primarily do patient engagement or some of these other areas. What are some of these other energy areas that are related to telehealth to consider as well? Yeah, patient engagement one that you mentioned, and, and that's definitely one of these tangential areas where they're touching uh, virtual care and some of the telehealth solutions. And RPM is another one that comes up. As we have conversations with providers about telehealth, oftentimes RPM comes up as, as a way to see kind of how patients are doing. And, and you know, it's one thing to communicate via video or see a patient, but what are some of the vitals that we measure when we have an in-person visit? You know, patients or providers want to have insights into those, uh, those data points as well. So those are a couple that come up. Um, obviously, EMR and working together with the EMR is something that comes up as well. Um, but those are some of the main areas that come up as, as touching kind of the virtual care solutions. Whether VitalNet or any of these other vendors that you've talked about in your ecosystem report, I think longevity is very important as well. When we talk to providers, you know, many of them had kind of a Band-Aid solution during COVID, but that's not their go-forward solution for a long time, right? When we, we measure uh, vulnerability at class, and right now about one in four telehealth solutions is vulnerable to being replaced. So a solution like, like VitalNet, is this something that can have longevity in the market? Because a, a provider doesn't necessarily want to use something that's going to go away in a couple of years through merger and acquisition activity that is inevitable in telehealth. Yeah. Yeah, so one of the things that I think helps VitalNet or, or vendors like VitalNet is their ability to work with other virtual care solutions. And whether it's, it's some of the video conferencing vendors that we see or some of the RPM or patient engagement technologies that we've talked about, their ability to kind of work with those solutions, in my mind, gives them an opportunity to have that longevity that will allow providers to use them, you know, moving forward as a solution. You mentioned the 25% that are considering, you know, what is our long-term solution? And, and so I think this gives them an opportunity to be one of those vendors that is considered as, as one of the long-term solutions. Thank you so much, Schaefer, for being here. I know you're probably the busiest person at class because telehealth is such a high energy space right now. So thanks for taking some time to come and talk to us here today. And thank you to our viewers for watching. Um, if you know of any innovative, disruptive, or emerging technologies, please email us at etech at classresearch.com. Everything we do here at Class, we want to help providers uh, improve and have the best IT experience that they can have. If you want to check out the VitalNet First Look Report or any of our other research on telehealth or any other healthcare IT markets, please visit us at classresearch.com. Thanks.